Hello, I'm Fred of Zeno Market. Today I'll do a setup tutorial on the board game Spirit Island for first time players. Spirit Island is a cooperative seller destruction game for one to four players. Brought to us by Greater Than Games and designed by R. Eric Roos, you play spirits on a remote island that's being invaded by settlers from a far off land. As a spirit, you have to destroy these settlers before they build on the island and thus blight it and make it uninhabitable for natives. On this video, I'll show you setting up this game for beginners for solo play with two spirits. So let's get this game on the table. Thank you. This is the invader board. You place this on one side of the play area. I usually like to put it on the left side when playing solo. In a two to four player game, it will be an essential area with two players on each side of the board. So now, this here is the fear pool. Each spirit or player would get four fear tokens. Since I'm playing with two spirits, I'll be putting down eight fear tokens on the board. So I'll put one, two, three, four for my first spirit. One, two, three, four. So eight fear tokens for both my spirits. Fear is one of the weapons you would use against the settlers or the invaders on this game. Now during gameplay, when a spirit generates fear, you move a fear token from the fear pool into the generated fear area. There are many ways you can generate fear. One way is to destroy a town. This little guy here. So that generates like one fear token. Or if you destroy a city, that would generate two fear to put into the fear, generated fear area. And there's also some powers that can generate fear, like say, Shadow Homesteads. As you get an icon right here, it generates one fear. So you take one fear here and put it in here. Or, power like Talons of Lightning would generate three fear. So you take all three fear, one, two, three, and generate fear. Now when all the fear from the fear pools move into the generate fear token, generate fear area, then you would like reveal, you would play a fear card from the fear deck. You put this here, and you reveal that fear card during the invader phase, which I'll show later. And once that card has been placed down, then you put the generated fear back into the fear pool right here, and start again. Now take the nine fear cards that you just shuffled and put it on a table near the fear deck space, which is right here. Now take three cards from the fear deck and place them on the fear deck space right here. And then you take the terror level three divider and put that on top of those three cards. Then you take three more cards from the fear deck and put that on top of the terror level three divider. And then you take the terror level two divider and place it on top of those three cards. And then you put the th last three remaining cards on top of tail level three. This is your fear deck. So when the fear is generated, like it's generated right here, you place a card from the top of the fear deck and put it here in the earned fear cards. And then during the turn, during the invader phase, during the fear part of the invader phase, you then you reveal the fear card, which depending on what lot tail level you have, you get a special action or ability they use against the invaders. And then once you use that, then it gets discarded into the discarded fear cards. And that's how you use the fear deck. So I just want to show you the terror levels, which is used by the fear deck. So right now you start the game off at terror level 1. So the victory condition in order for you to win at terror level 1 is you destroy all the cities, all the towns, and all the settlers on the board. That's how you win the game at tail level one. So as you keep playing the fear cards as you reveal it, and then you reach tail level two. So you take this divider, they put it into the new, and so now the tail level from one is now tail level two. So now tail level two is in place down here. Now the victory condition has changed. At tail level two, now the victory condition is. Destroy all the cities, destroy all the towns, then you would win the game. 
You don't need to destroy the settlers. Now as you play more fear cards after getting level, tier level 2, then you reach tier level 3. So now you take that divider, you put that on top of tier level 2, and so now you reach tier level 3. Okay, so now we have tier level 3 here now. That means the, ch the victory condition has changed again. So now in tier level 3, all you need to do is destroy all the cities, and that's all you need to do to win the game. So then also, as you now there's three remaining fear cards. Now you reach the end of your fear deck. And so this means you won victory. So if you haven't won by destroying all the cities and towns and cellars, you can win by completing the fear deck right here. Now this is the blight area of the board, the invader board. Now blight is bad for us. Okay, so whenever an invader would damage the land, like they'll do two points of damage to the land on the board, but I'll get a blight token, which is one of these, and these will be added to the board. And these are bad, so, but on a, on a regular game that's not a newbie, there's actually two different blight cards, and you use one of them, and you place it here. So, when you use up a blight on a healthy island, then you switch over to the blighted island, and that makes it worse. But on this game, we use only we won't use the blighting cards at all. We use only the blighted area without the cards. So on this one, we'll add five blight per spirit or player, which is five, five blight per player or spirit. So um, so I put five blight here. But instead of using two spirits, I'm gonna add another five blight to this blight area. So now there's no healthy island or blighted island state on a beginner game. There's only 10 blights. And whenever the land gets damaged, you take a blight off this board. And if, if you don't stop the blight from happening, if you use all the blights are removed from this board and not put back, and then you would lose the game. So blight is bad. Now, Blight, which is this token right here, this is put on land if it receives two or more damage during the Blight phase of the Settler's turn, which I'll explain later. But what I'll tell you now is that a Settler does one point of damage, a Town does two points of damage, and a City does three. So you can see three, two, and one at six points of damage. So it creates a Blight. So what's a Blight here? And Blight will be bad. And if there's a presence on this terrain right here, since blight was placed down, this presence is destroyed and taken out of the game. So you don't want to be blighted when you have a presence on that terrain. At the bottom of the invader board is the invader area deck. This is determined what the invaders will do during their turn. The invader deck is 12 cards. So to start this deck, you take the stage 3 cards, you shuffle them up, you count out five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And you put that on the, the box called Explorer. You take this extra stage three card and put it back in the box. Then you take the stage two deck. There should only be four in this deck. So you first you shuffle it. They count out four cards. One, two, three, four. You put that on top of the stage three deck. You put this extra card in the box. And last is the stage one cards. So you shuffle these cards. You count out three cards. One, two, three. So you put the remaining one in the back in the box. So this is the invader deck that you start off with. So let's show, let me show you a way of how it works during a game. So three, there's four boxes. Discard, Ravage, Build, and Explore. So now when you start to turn, you flip this card over, and it shows M, which is Mountains. So during the first turn, during the Invader turn, they will explore the mountains. That means one of the, the settlers the settler here 
we're placing the terrain on the mountains. Okay, and then once you do that turn, on the next round, this gets moved over to build, and then the explore card is revealed, which is the wetlands. So on this round, during the invader turn, they will build on the mountains this time. So during the, the build phase, they'll build either a city or a town on the mountain regions. And then on the wetlands, we'll have the explorers. So at, once that turn is, once that, once that round is over, then you shift the mountains to a ravage, you shift the wetlands to build, and then you would reveal the explorer. <clears throat> so now during this turn, ravage means that they will attack the land. So like, cities will do three points of damage to the land and to the native Dahans. The towns will do two points of damage to the land, and the settlers would do one point of damage. Now if one terrain or land, like the mountains, gets two points of damage, then it gets a blight. So a blight is removed and put on that land. And um, that's what Ravage is, attacking the land. And builders, of course, as I said before, building towns and cities. And explorers when the settlers are put down. And then once the turn continues, you would discard the mountains. You would move the wetlands to Ravage. You move the jungle to a build. And then you reveal sand for the explorer. So you can plan your moves ahead of time because you know what they'll attack, what they'll attack, where they'll build, and where they'll explore. So this, and then this keeps going. And if you go through the entire deck all the way to the end, then you would lose the game. So you have to destroy the invaders before the deck runs out. There are four island boards. The number of island boards is one of the number of players or spirits. As you can see, there are four pieces in all. Because there's four Madison players. And it's all, they're all slightly different from one another. So let me show you the maps. For one spirit, you only need to use one board only. And that's it. So, pretty simple. This is a two spirit map. There are two boards. And since I'll be playing with two spirits, this will be the map I'll be using. This is a three player map right here. You can see the three pieces right here. This is a four player map. So just use all the four boards. Now you need to pop up the board with the starting invaders, the Han, and Blight. When you use the Blight, you use the one from the bag, not from the invader board, because that's for the game itself. You use the Blight for the starting map. Now if you see close to the board, there are icons in each terrain. This is where you place the starting invaders, Dahan, and Blight. So this symbol right here, that's a symbol of the city. You can see like three buildings in there. So you put a city right here. You see this little mushroom with two legs? That's a Dahan. This is what this is. A little mushroom. That's where so just you put the Dahan right there. Make sure they're standing up. Because when they're on a side like this, that means they're damaged. See, that means they're damaged, so they'll be standing straight up. Here, you can see it says two to Han. Okay, here is one to Han. And you see simple here. That little kind of a round mound shape. That's a blight. So you put the blade token here, like I said before, you only take it, you don't take it from the invader board, you take it from the bag, which you put back in the box. And here's another blade right here. Here's a town, so it shows two buildings. So I'll put a town right here. You see two to Han here, so I'll put two to Han right here. As you can see, I added the trays next to the map, so we have all the pieces for this game. So the cities, the towns, the settlers, the presents, the Dahan, and the energy tokens. So let's just start adding, like I told you, 
Let's start adding these pieces to the starting game. I'm going to take first out the blight. Now this blight is taken from the bag, not from the invader board. This will be the starting blight. So there's a blight symbol here. I put a blight here. So the pieces are down for the starting board. Start start a game of the map. Now there's two decks here. The minor powers and the major powers. This is the minor powers. This is the deck here. We usually put it here. And the major powers you put right here. Now we'll be playing the, the beginner rules. So we won't be using these decks. We'll be creating progression decks for our two spirits. So I'll put these away. I just want to show you where to usually go. Now we'll explain the two spirits that we'll be playing with next. When playing the beginner rules, you'll use the low complexity spirits. They're easy to use. These they are Lightning Swift Strike, River Surges and Sunlight, Shadows Flicker Like Flame, and Vital Strength of the Earth. And as you can see down here, the complexity is low. So that means if you're a beginner player, you should play with these spirits. And now this game, I'll play with two spirits. I'll play with Lightning Swift Strike and Shadows Flicker Like Flame. Now on this side of the spirit card, shows a little backstory. And the setup for the spirit. That shows how you should play the spirit. The strengths and the weaknesses all right here. This is a play style right here. So you can see. Um, so now right here is the setup. It says right here to put two presents on your starting board in the highest number of sands. So that's where I put his presents. Now I put the two presents of lightning swift strike on the highest number of sands. So, so far the highest number seems to be this one here, 7. So put one presence here. This one is 5. So put a presence here. Now we will flip over Lightning Swift Strikes card to show the side that you play with. So this, this is player side. So now we'll cover the two tracks so this is two tracks we put the presence. This is the energy, and this is how many cards you can play per turn. And so I'll be using the yellow presence to cover up. We'll leave the left side uncovered. That's how they'll start with the game. This is how it starts. So, Lightning Swift Strike will start with only one energy, which is not a whole lot. And he can play with the two cards in his hand. And as you add presence to the board, you take it from here, or you can take it from here. There are two choices. So, when you review this, you can see he has, you can play three cards. Or here, it's still one. If you continue like adding presents, you can eventually like uncover more energy. Swift so Strike is very slow at getting more energy. And this is a part called the growth. This is for the growth phase. So you have three choices for Lightning Swift Strike. Reclaim cards, which means any discarded power you can reclaim back into your hand. This is called Game on Power. This is when you add another power from the deck to your hand. This is a game on an additional energy. In addition to this energy, you get one more. And on this choice, you can on this choice right here, separate by those two lines, you can add a presence onto the board that's at least two terrain or spaces away from a, a present present terrain, a present presence. And this way, you add a presence in the same terrain. And this choice here, you add a present that's one space away from your presence. Or you, and you gain three energy. 
And right here is where the special rules. Each spear has different special rules, which is their unique abilities. And right here, innate powers right here. So when you get like these tags on your power, which I'll show in a later video, this shows additional powers that you have. And then the shadows flicker like flame. He's a scary, low complexity spirit. Ooh. He's great at creating fear and at offense. So he's got a lot of offensive abilities as well. On his setup, right here, you take three of his presents at the start. And you add two to the highest number jungle and one into a land that has a number five on it. And that puts the presents down for a shadow, for the shadow spirit. It says to put on the highest number jungles. So one of the highest number of jungles here is eight. So put it in here. And here's another eight right here. So put another presence down here. Another place to put his presence on a land with a number five on it. We choose this one, the wetlands, because it has number five here. So I put his presence here. Now with all the presence down, the map is now ready for play. All spirits have a starting power hand. You can see here that these four cards have Lightning Swift Strike's image. This is a starting power deck. So there's four cards. And these are his power that he has right here. So this is four starting powers he has in his hands. You see here, Shadow Flicker Like Flame starting power deck. See his image here? This is his starting deck. So this is his starting powers right here. That you use to start playing a game. Now, since we're playing the beginner game, we do was we won't be playing. We won't be like playing with the major minor power deck or a major power deck. What we do is we we'll create two power deck power progression decks for both spirits because they're both low complexity. So this is the power progression. A lightning swift strike. They can see like you have a list of powers of his deck. This is the list of power to get, and I can see in the corner there's a a gold colored color corner. So you look through the deck for those cards. So first you take the minor power deck, or you flip it over, and look for cards that has his minor deck. And look at that! What a coincidence! All his power decks are here. This is his power cards. You can see with the little gold color corner. So this is his progression deck here. There we go. I'll take the major power deck, look for his major powers of his progress power progression deck and take these two and put them here. Same thing with Shadows Flicker Like Flame on his power progression card. This lists his powers on his personal deck. And they all have a red corner. So we'll go through the minor deck and look, what a coincidence. This also has all the cards he needs. So put this minor power deck away. You can see here all the red. So this is his power deck, this power progression deck. And let's take the major power deck. And look here. See the two red corners? Those are his major powers. So now you can like put the starting hand right here underneath the Lightning Swift Strikes card and put the discard pile right here. And you can put the, the power progression deck right here for Lightning Swift Strike. And right here you can put Shadows Flicker Like Flames starting hand, starting deck right here. And this will be the discard area and this will be the power progression deck right here. So whenever he like gains new power you can like add this to his hand. So the cards change in order of the progression deck. So these cards, the power progression cards, are no longer needed. So you can put them back in the box. And here's like my um, reference cards. I'll put them here. And the major and minor power decks can be put away.
Now the game is ready to be played. Stay tuned for my next video when I do a playthrough on Spirit Island. So thank you for watching my video. And please hit my like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.